everyone. I'm Kristen Dahlgren in New York, and we are coming on the air at this hour with news of a school shooting in South Florida. This took place in Parkland, Florida, at Douglas High School. No word yet on casualties. So it was Valentine's Day, a uh, month of the day is normal. I think it was 2.35, it was like 10 minutes before class. And all of a sudden we hear it's like really loud bangs. Like, and I, if you've never heard a gun before, like you don't, you can't recognize it because you've never heard it before. It's not in like your brain's database, I guess. Oh, 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 my, oh, oh my God. So we heard it and we're like, what the hell was that? But then we heard it again, and that's when we started to see worrying faces everywhere. And everyone started questioning, like, oh my god, what is that? And then we heard it a few more times, and that's when we knew, like, this is like a troubling situation. This is like a really bad situation. And we immediately, the teacher had one of the students turn the lights off. We all went in the corner, and we hid there for I'm not sure how long, I want to say 45 minutes to an hour, something around there, until the police finally showed up, or it might have been SWAT, I don't even know who it was. But we were on the first floor uh, by the main door, so we were one of the first rooms to be let out. It really, it just alarms you. And after that, just adrenaline like coursing through me, because uh, I mean, I was in a life or death situation. And when I walked out of the room, or ran out of the room, the class across from me was Alex Schachter's class. And this girl was crying. She was like, oh my God, like Alex, like, oh my God. And I, of course, I didn't know if that was him or not. There could have been another Alex, who knows? But, so I didn't pay too much attention to it at the time. Uh, so I was with my friend Sam. He was in that class as well, or in the class across. And so we're walking home after they tell us to like, just basically leave the, the school, so to get safe. Where everyone's texting the group chat, we're like, is everyone okay? Like, oh my God, this is crazy. And out of everyone who texted, the only one who never responded was Alex. And we're like, oh, he probably just doesn't have his phone on him or something. We never thought, I mean, we never thought he might have been in danger. Uh, so later that night, it was confirmed like he was he was shot, and we get the call later that night. I think it was 2 a.m. that he ended up passing away. He didn't make it. Yeah, Alex was one of the nicest kids I've ever known. I mean, he didn't have a mean bone in his body. He just was never. He was just really pure. He's a pure kid. Uh, we just loved to hang out with each other. We always played sports together. Growing up, we played video games together, slept over at each other's houses, you know, we were just really good friends. He was a great person. We get an alert that it's a code red to like hide. Everybody, people, most people were in classrooms, but I happened to be in an auditorium. Um, the, our principal came in, he was like, hide under siege, there's like an active shooter on campus, hide, 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 get down. Uh, turn your phone lights off because we don't want anybody knowing that there's people in here. Shut the doors, like, no talking. So I remember just texting my mom, I'm like, hey, I don't know what's happening, but like, so there's rumors that there's an active shooter on campus. I, like, I, I was saying, like, I love you, like, I was thinking the worst, like, this was terrifying for me. Um, we were in there for seven and a half hours before we got any notification that it was all clear, and we, at, it was at the end of the school day, it was like four, four o'clock or 4.30 or something, that we were finally, finally released and like safe to go home. You know, the argument that 
was made on the floor was that, well, the criminals will have guns, they won't have a class, they won't have a permit, they won't have a background check. So everyone should just be allowed to have a gun. People should not just be walking around with a gun hidden under their shirt or somewhere on their body and not have any training with that gun. If that's your argument, then we shouldn't have any laws in the United States. I see young people come in all the time to buy a gun and they want something for home defense, they want it just because they think it's cool. If someone comes in and they, they say, oh, I want something that, I'm gonna, that I can have fun with, like that's, most people look at guns as something that you're gonna do recreationally. The form already asks, it says like, are you eligible to buy the firearm? Are you gonna use this for criminal purposes? Are you under the influence of any illegal drugs? Are you mentally unstable or been placed in a mental institution? So there's, there's all these questions are there to, to kind of steer these people into making the right decision. And if they lie on the form, then it's technically punishable. So I work for Miami-Dade County Public Schools. Um, they have put an officer at every school. Some officers are better equipped than other officers to protect. Um, our officer is very good. She walks around the school. She makes sure that doors are closed. We have a one entry policy. Our principal is very strict on. So we are only able to go in and out one gate that's constantly locked with a security guard in the front and the police officer nearby. My school has a large amount of teachers that want their concealed weapons license. So I am gonna be hosting a training for those teachers who wanna come and learn. I do feel very safe in our school, in our campus. I know it's not like that for all schools. I started the Make Our School Safe Club at Cypress Bay and the reason I started this club was I was in middle school when MSD happened and from that moment my life greatly changed as I knew people that went there and I knew that I had to make a change in the world. It was originally founded by Lori Alhaldaf whose daughter Alyssa Alhaldaf was a victim of the Parkland shooting in 2018 and she kind of gave us the opportunity for any high school student to implement an organization in their school to promote school safety in their institution. So I, my junior year I implemented it in my high school and we raised $15,000 to put over 300 Stop the Bleed kits in every classroom and common area on my campus and we in my, in my senior year, we had the opportunity to train teachers and staff and students that wanted to be trained on how to use these kits. So in the case of an emergency or somebody gets stabbed or somebody gets shot, this kit will automatically clot your blood so that you don't die from bleeding out. And it just promote, it, it promotes safety. It's not anti-gun, it's for safety. I think people are scared to talk about gun issues and gun regulation because that's a very highly controversial topic. But there's a difference between gun safety and the safety inside of schools. And that's something that can't be argued. If a gun makes it onto campus, people are going to die, presumably. And you can prevent children from dying, you can prevent teach our educators from dying, you can prevent so many people from dying just by implanting things in the classroom, which that shouldn't be controversial. That should be a fact. That should be, if somebody could die, prevent that death. Gun safety, is the gun and gun regulation is a whole other topic. What I've always kind of been an advocate for is school safety. So that shouldn't be controversial. I mean, it definitely hurts, destroys a community, honestly. Definitely some people in my school that I knew, I mean, some of them transferred, some of them just stopped going to school altogether. Uh, the weeks after were filled with funerals and vigils and gatherings and services and stuff like that. I think it was Columbine, I remember that. When I saw it on TV, I was like, that's insane, like that almost never happens. But once the shooting happened, I was like, I was, I guess my eyes were open. It happens way more often than people actually think. And so when I see that, I'm just like, Jesus, another one. And I don't know, just nothing's being done about it.